Hi, I'm Frank Turner. I'm here at Amoeba Records, one of the greatest record stores in the world, and this is what's in my bag. Oh, the birds are ringing in the opening act of spring, and I have fallen down, and I'm so much worse than I have ever been. Oh, the season's acting strange, and I know that something has to change, but there is no path I can choose that will not bring somebody pain. Shall we start at the top? John Prine. Um, I don't really know anything about John Prine, and I don't think I've ever heard any John Prine, but he's on my... I have a list of people I'm planning on checking out, and this is four records on, in one box, so that is all the John Prine I'm going to need for the next year or so. Blow up your teeth, go away your fight, go till you can build you a home, plant a little garden, eat a lot of peas, champ and cheese. I am a gigantic uber mega fan of Loudon Wainwright III. He is one of my heroes, both as a songwriter and as a, as a sort of touring musician. I've got most of his stuff, but I was having a flick through the racks and I found this as a live radio session. I absolutely love his stuff live. There's a kind of playfulness and a sort of spontaneity. That, I mean, it, you know, you can't really do it in the studio, or at least not the way that he does it. He's got Road Ode in here, which is a song which He's never really recorded properly, as far as I know, but um, he, he plays it live a lot, and it's one of my favourite songs. Of his. It's baby shampoo, no, you're not snobby. Losing your toothbrush is your hobby. Lucky they sell that stuff in the lobby. You're lucky that you're out on the road. It's funny and true and heartbreaking all at the same time, which is what I love about his stuff, is it sort of has that sort of mix to it. There's that line. It's on, in the song Your Mother and I, which is also on here. It's the saddest song ever about divorce. It's explaining divorce to his children. And it's like, your mother and I, we both fell in love and love's a very deep hole. You know, ah, oh, genius. Oh, amazing. So I'm going to listen to that. I recently finished reading uh, Peter Goralnik's two-volume biography of Elvis Presley, Last Train to Memphis and Careless Love. I didn't know mass about Elvis before that, and I thought I should educate myself. I read music books all the time. It was one of the best music books I've read. Uh, it totally grabbed my attention. It made me kind of fall in love with Elvis quite hard. I sort of had bits and bobs of his stuff here and there, but I've been trying to kind of now properly get into his stuff. As a music snob, I should of course be morally opposed to sort of greatest hits compilations, but fuck it. Um, all the greatest hits, three CDs, Artist of the Century, it says. This is a record that I should own already and don't. It's the fine Bur Burrito Brothers, uh, Gilded Palace of Sin. And I know the record, I just don't have my own copy of it. And I've now restituted that. She's a devil in disguise. You can't see it in her eyes. She's telling dirty lies. She's a devil in disguise. If you're into kind of uh, country, country rock or anything like that, or American music, arguably, this is uh, a record that everybody should own. Uh, Graham Parsons' Finest Hour, arguably. I certainly think it's better than GP, which is the other record that people cite. I'm very excited about this. this. Again, on my own stereo with my own copy. It's quite a sort of um, country and folk heavy selection today. I found myself at that end of things. My, my other obsession right now is George Jones. The thing is, I know Americans know who George Jones is, but English people generally don't. Um, I've not really heard of him, but I've sort of got into like alt country you know, sort of Ryan Adams and that kind of thing, which is fine, and I love that kind of music, but it's sort of, I've always had an interest in discovering the real shit, you know, the OG country, <laughs> if you can call it that. So, came across George Jones, I read his autobiography, it was completely fucking mental. I mean, I read The Dirt by Motley Crue, and everybody thinks they're the most screwed up, like, rock and roll guys ever. They got nothing on George Jones, but he looks so nice, doesn't he? They were looking, trying to book him, but I'm happy, kept on talking. Well, then. The craziest part of his autobiography, I mean, there's many. Uh, I mean, there's the famous track to my story when Tammy Wynette hid the keys to every vehicle so he couldn't get any alcohol, and then he just drove his track to 50 miles to the nearest bar. But it gets considerably kind of more fucked and less funny. He tried to quit drugs in the early 80s, and his drug dealer kidnapped his family because he was making so much money out of him that he was like, nope. And then when he gave him back, he bought out his management contract and took a life insurance policy out on him. So uh, that guy did a lot of cocaine. Do you know what I mean? And then it's all like Nikki Six is like, yeah, we did a bunch of lines after the show. It's like, fucking whatever, dude. <laughs> Not the one should like glamorize this stuff because if you want to read something that's going to put you off doing drugs, his autobiography is a pretty good place to start because it's just fucking miserable by the end of it. Um, he did clean up in the end before he died, which is great. So, hooray. But um, yeah, he, uh, he was out of his fucking mind.
So I, I keep talking about books, I love music books. Um, the music book section downstairs slightly blew my mind and I had to kind of back away slowly. I was having a flick through and this is a serious find. This is a book by Charlie Leuven of the Leuven Brothers. They're yet more venerable country even before George Jones. I've been listening to them a lot lately. Uh, their classic album Satan is Real, um, which has the best front cover of any album ever. Satan is real, working with power. Kind of like 40s, 50s, kind of super early trad country kind of stuff. And famously, yeah, there were two brothers, Charlie and Ira. Charlie was a sort of God-fearing church-going uh, guy, and Ira was a totally deranged alcoholic and used to smash his mandolin on stage all the time. And I don't know that much about them beyond that. I didn't even know this book existed, and I found it in the racks downstairs, and it was just, straight away, it was just like amazing. Um, I did have a wander around the punk and hardcore racks. That's the music I grew up with. Uh, I'm not that up to date on the scene, shall we say. Well, I mean, there are some new bands coming through that I really like, Touche Moria, great. Um, Every Time I Die are awesome. Having a flick through, I managed to find a Converge record that I don't own, which is something because I own an awful lot of Converge records. I have a Converge tattoo back here. I'm lucky enough to say that we're kind of friends as well. We record in our B-sides in Kurt's studio. But yeah, this is I, I know the existence of this record. It's called Caring Killing. Uh, it's B-sides and Merities from 91 to 94. It's out of print. And I don't have a copy until now. Yeah, I'm excited about putting that on in the car later. My tour manager's shaking his head and crying. Cool. Thank you so much cool. for talking with us. Thank today. you. That's fun. I'm I'm excited. And now my only thing is how I'm going to fit any of this in my bag to go home. But fuck it, we'll make it happen.